this is the Memory and Resistance Laboratory podcast. I am Latipa, Director of the Memory and Resistance Laboratory and Associate Professor of Media and Cultural Studies at the University of California, Riverside. The Memory and Resistance Laboratory is a hub for anti-racist, decolonial, and feminist of color artistic research. In this podcast series, Memory and Resistance in the Time of COVID, students from UCR interview people across the fields of education, art, medicine, and labor organizing to ask about the larger political, social, historical, and economic impacts of our current circumstances for vulnerable communities. In this episode, we are joined by Kristen Beersdorf, a preschool teacher working at a child development center aboard Camp Lejeune Marine Corps Base located in North Carolina. Kristen is interviewed by Ashley Liebert, a third year student majoring in media and cultural studies at the University of California, Riverside. Hello, my name is Ashley Liebert. Joining me today is Kristen Byersdorf. Kristen works at a child development center aboard Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune located in North Carolina. Um, she works at the child development center caring for the children of the military families as well as children of first respondents aboard the base. Kristen has over five years working in child care and with military families. She also comes from a military family and is a Marine wife as well. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the ways in which COVID-19 has, has affected her job. Welcome, Kristen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I kind of just wanna know, you know, how things are going at your job. I'm sure a lot has changed right now with the crazy times in the world. So can you give me maybe like an overall breakdown of ways that things have changed? Um, it has definitely gone back and forth a little. Um, in the beginning, I want to say end of March is when um, Lejeune and the CDC has decided to curtail operations. Um, they closed four out of the seven centers on base and um, they kept two open on the Camp Lejeune side and one open on New River. Um, and we were doing a two on two off week rotation with the centers who had closed. Um, they wanted all the employees to get hours and so we worked two weeks on and then other employees from other centers came in and worked while we had two weeks off. Mm -hmm. um, we did that for about a month and then um, new information came out, policies changed again, and we decided to reopen all of the centers and send um, all the employees back to a regular schedule. Um, and so now we're sort of in a moving slowly forward to opening back up to full operation, full ratios in our classrooms, et cetera. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure things are changing all the time, you know, as information comes out and it seems like, you know, things still change day by day. So that's, that's got to be hard to deal with. Um, about how many children were, were coming in to the center on a, a normal day? In the beginning, when they first um, started the curtailment, they kept the ratios really low, at least a single ratio for every classroom. So um, in our infant classrooms, there were only four infants maximum allowed. Um, in our pre-toddler classrooms, they had a five-child maximum limit. Um, toddlers was a seven-child limit, and preschool was an eight-child limit. Um, right now, we're still at that limit, but since we are sort of opening back up, we've heard beginning June 1st, we will go I've been in a preschool classroom, we're gonna go back up to a 10 child limit. So slowly but surely our um, ratio is rising back up. Okay, yeah. 
Um, that's interesting. So, so not not a whole lot of children considering what you guys are are normally at. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's definitely been a huge sort of cutback. Um, yeah, right. Trying to keep as much distance classroom itself so right right um has there any has there been any policy changes or um are you guys having to wear masks to work or the children yes so um the marine corps base as a whole um has put in place sort of a mask policy that any building that you enter into um that mccs programs runs such as the commissary, the grocery store, the CDCs, you must have a mask on. So all of the parents are required to have a mask on when they, as soon as they enter the building until they leave the building. Um, and us as employees are required to have our masks on throughout the building, um, but we are not required to have them on when we're inside our own classroom. Okay. Um, and the kids are not required to have a mask at all. Okay. Other than like the mask policy, um, they have put into place that um, the employees are to stay within their age group. So we are not crossing hallways, we are not crossing age groups to prevent any kind of contamination between the classrooms. Um, since I've been in the preschool classrooms, if any of the other preschool classrooms need a break or need an extra hand, um, I'm allowed to go into those classrooms, but that's the extent of where they would like me to be. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. What about um, management? Has management been pretty supportive to the employees if um, you know someone someone needs time off or someone's family sick or if they're sick? Absolutely. Management um, has been incredible throughout this whole thing. Very supportive with um, trying to make sure that if you are not feeling well, you have to stay at home or if you aren't feeling well at work, they let you leave early. Um, due to the low ratios, it's been a little bit easier to have that kind of flexibility just because um, at a single ratio, there's less staff required. So if staff needs to be off or whatnot then they have the ability to do that. Um, and they also have been very, very awesome working with parents who have school-age kids, kids who have to be home um, and who may not have care for say the afternoon or the morning. They work with you and give you the shift that works best for your needs as well as what they need. So they have been phenomenal during this whole thing and very, very openly communicating new policies that um yeah they've just they can't say enough good things <laughs> well that's that's really great to hear because i know you know it's it's such a hard time for everybody and and things you know have been unpredictable so it's really good that you that you have support like that that all of you guys have that kind of support so, you know, I, I know there's been a I'm lot of. Um, so I know a lot of places have been low on supplies, medical supplies, PPE. Um, how have you guys been on supplies at the center? Um, to be honest, I haven't noticed a huge shortage um, in anything. Our nurse is the one who supplies us with um, like biohazard gloves. Um, we have not had any issues with toilet paper shortage, paper towel shortages of any kind. So I think we've been lucky. We've been pretty good in that respect. Um, and they also have had um, seamstresses make masks. There have always been masks available for the employees. Um, most employees have their own or have had someone sew them. Um, but if there's ever a day that you forget them, there is always a mask up at the front that they have provided for us. So um, we haven't really noticed any kind of shortage in that regard, which has been good. 
Oh, that's that's good to hear. That's because I know that's not a lot of places. So that's that's really good that you guys have had everything that you've needed. Mm -hmm. um, I know this kind of goes back to my question before about, um, you know, if someone's sick, but what is what is the protocol right now if a child or an employee appears to be showing um, symptoms of illness? Um, so very first thing when you walk into the building, you are met with the nurse who does um, take your temperature and asks you all of the necessary questions, asks about a cough, out of, about a um, shortness of breath, about um, if you've had any contact with anybody who has had the virus or um, what have you. And so that's the very first thing that you um, do when you enter the center, whether you're a parent, a child, an employee. Um, if there are um, exclusion guidelines that they've laid out that said, if you have any kind of temperature, 99 and above, and have answered yes to any of their questions about a cough or shortness of breath, um, you're excluded and you have to um, go home. Um, they're not requiring that you go get tested because obviously it's also allergy season. So there's a lot of just like precautions in place. Um, but your typical guidelines say that you're allowed to return when the cough goes away or your fever goes down. Um, so they're pretty strict on that. And um, I myself have encountered it with my son. And so um, that gives us a little bit of reassurance knowing that first thing first when they enter the center is if there's any kind of question about illness that they will be sent home and may return when um, symptoms have gone away. So. Um, that's been that's been a good um, reassurance to all of us as employees that we're not going to get um, family members or students who um, may have any kind of illness, and as well as your employees are not going to come to work with any kind of illness. So, right, yeah, yeah, that's good. What about um, moving forward with things? Have you seen any sort of policies put into place about? Um, possibly for the future, um, you know, say an outbreak were to happen again in fall or the winter, like it has been spoken about. Um, is there anything moving forward that MCCS, uh, the Child Development Center is planning to do to prevent the spread? Um, I think as, in as, in the, as much power as we have to make these decisions, they're keeping employees in the same classrooms as much as possible and they are um i'm have not given us obviously an end date um for like when masks no longer need to be worn or um i think for the foreseeable future most of the precautions that we have in place will be staying in place um throughout the rest of the year um going back to when you asked about policy changes we're doing um, extra sanitizing as well. And I'm assuming that just that's going to become our new normal, um, spraying down playground equipment before we take our children outside or um, making sure that we're wearing gloves when we serve the food. And instead of letting the children serve the food, we're serving the food with our gloves on um, to prevent any kind of coughing, breathing into the food. Um, so there's a lot of things I think that have been put in place that will now be our new normal for the foreseeable future so that um, if there is any kind of outbreak, we've still got this kind of defense that we've set up for ourselves. So, yeah. Right. Well, how have you been during all of this? You know, how, how are things with your family and how has this affected you personally? Um, we've been doing really well, actually, overall. Um, it has led to us um, sort of getting outside more and doing more physical activity. We're walking and we're riding bikes and we're running and just finding an outlet to get out um, in a safe way. Um, it's been really well. In the beginning, um, it was a little bit of a struggle. Um, when we first entered curtailment, um, you had to submit a request for childcare if you were essential personnel. Um, and so my husband 
was going to work every day and I also was going to work every day. And so we had to submit a request for my son to continue care. And um, they didn't have a spot for him in the beginning. So it was very much a balance of, I would stay home with him in the morning and my husband would come home in the afternoon and we would just swap because there was no one to watch him. Um, and as we sort of moved forward, my center was very accommodating and found a spot for him. Um, and so it got better as the weeks went on and we all settled sort of into how it was going to be going for the next couple of months. Um, it's been exhausting, to be honest, I think. Um, I didn't realize how much, how important it was for me to be able to get out and go do things. Um, so I can tell that my mental health may be a not as strong as, you know, when things were open and you could go and hang out with friends and see your family in. Um, yeah. but, um, we've sort of, our state has entered a phase of reopening and slowly but safely we've been venturing out to um, do more and I think that that has helped enormously um, but overall it's been really good it's given us time to spend together as a family and um, encouraged us to find new outlets for ourselves and so I think it's been a good growth opportunity for us yeah that's really good you know it's it's always nice to find the positive in situations like this um, when so many people are, like you said, you know, you can't see family, you can't do so many of the normal things that you would be doing. Um, and it's been hard on a lot of people. So it's definitely good to hear that you guys have found some positive in it and that you guys really work together as a family um, when you went through that transition period when your son didn't have care. So that's, that's really good. I'm incredibly grateful for my husband for being flexible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was positive. So definitely. Well, thank you so much, Kristen. That's all the questions I have. Um, that concludes our session. Thank you so much again for taking the time to speak with me and, and for joining me and for sharing everything that's been going on with you. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. <laughs>